6.1, the definition of a polygon is a closed figure and it has at least three straight sides and angles. So it has to be a closed figure and it has to have straight sides, three straight sides. I mean, can you make a figure with two straight sides? A closed figure with two straight sides? No, that's why it has to be three. The vertex, here's the definition of the vertex. Each endpoint of the side is the vertex. You know that. So right here, vertex R has what sides? Side what? QR and RS. All right. The plural of vertex is vertices. This one has one, two, three, four, five vertices. But this is vertex R. All right. Example one. State whether the figure is a polygon. If it is not, explain why. Is A a polygon? Why? That's okay. It said that it has to have at least three sides. But is it a closed figure? And does it have three straight sides? I would say that that's a polygon. It's not the polygon you're thinking of. It's not like oh, a... I am meeting myself. Yes, you're thinking of regular polygons. This is just a polygon. So this is a yes. What about B? Is B a polygon? Yes. What about C? Is that a yes or a no? What'd you say? Penny. Yes. Yes, it is. It's a closed figure and it has at least three sides. Oh, easy. Why not? Exactly. It says straight sides. This has a rounded. It has a rounded side. So that's a no. And the next one's a no. Why? You have to say why. Why is E not? Not a closed figure. That's a no. And the last one? Yes. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's two closed figures. Yeah. It has to be open like this, a closed figure. This is a no because it has an intersecting line. No, let's see how the book actually says it. Let's see what, exactly what they say. I know it's not because it's intersecting and it's not like an open one figure. If you were what? Do you think it's yes? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good that you're not always trying to just go along with the teacher that you have your own opinions. Let's check the book. It says figure F is not a polygon because some of the sides intersect more than two other sides. No. All right. Here we go. Moving on. Okay. Talking about whether a figure is convex or concave. And how you would check it would be that you would take a straight edge and you'd go along the outside. And you would just keep going around. And if none of those lines went on the inside of the figure, then it's going to be convex, the ones we're working with. A concave one, it's caved in because I can take and I can go to a vertex and I can draw a line and it ends up going through the middle of the figure. You can't have that. Okay, it's got to be a closed figure that is convex. This is concave, it's caved in. We're going to be working with convex polygons. Okay, on A and B, is it convex, concave, none of them? Write it down. If I'm using the test and I'm not sure, I just go straight in the line. Okay, I made it straight. It didn't go in the, it did not go in the polygon, so it must be convex. Is it convex? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And how about if I do this side? And I do a straight line. Is it going inside the figure? That's not good. You just have to extend any of the lines. And if any of them go inside the figure, what's it called, Penny? Concave. It's caved in. This is concave. And if I did straight edges on all of these ones right here, not one of them would go on the inside of the polygon. Therefore, this one is convex. What you are mostly thinking of is what we use all the time, which is called a regular polygon. This is how you know if it's a regular polygon. 
It has to, the polygon is equilateral of all of its sides are congruent. What's equilateral mean again? Equilateral. They're what? All the sides are equal. They're all the same. Okay. And not only is it equilateral, it also has to be equiangular. What's that mean for all the angles on the inside? All of the angles are equal as well. So if I look at this one, you can see all of these sides are the same. So it passes equilateral. And then all of these on the inside, all of these angles would be the same. Does this one have all equal sides? Yeah. Must be a regular polygon though, right? Has all equal sides. Is that it? Equal sides? It also has to have equal angles, does it? Does this have equal angles? No. We have these two are the same. We look at their markings. And then if we look this way, these are different ones, but these are equal to each other and these are equal to each other. They're all equal to each other. So no. Yes, it shows the markings that all the sides are equal and it has the same marking for the angles. So this would be a yes. No. And then this one right here. It's no. It's true that it has all the sides equal, and I think that you could tell by looking at it, but it didn't say anything about the angles. Are all the angles on this equal? You think all these angles are equal? Is this angle right here, is this one going to be acute or obtuse? This is an acute angle. What about this one right here, acute or obtuse? And this is an obtuse angle. So just by looking at that, you can see that not all the angles would be the same. I mean, forget this one. This is an angle. It's an angle. This technique is actually used later on. I'm not sure why they show it to you now, but a diagonal of a polygon is a segment that joins two non-consecutive vertices. So if I'm going from vertice Q, it's always going to have two sides that you can't go to because it's attached to it. I can't go to this one and I can't go to that one, but I can go from Q to T and then I can go from Q to S. So this one has two diagonals in it. I would not count the sides of the polygon that it's connected at vertex Q. Okay. How, what's the sum of the angles of a triangle? How much? 180. So I have three triangles here. Could I figure out what the sum of the angles is for the entire polygon? It'd be 180 plus 180 plus 180. Why? Do you have four triangles? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, this is not a three-dimensional figure, but it does look like one, doesn't it? It's actually just a plane. But the way when you draw those diagonals, it does make it look like it's three-dimensional. Nice job thinking outside the box, Boston. But a three-dimensional figure is not a polygon. Polygon, flat surface. All right, it's moving on, moving on. Here we go. This is a formula that you need. It's the interior angles of a quadrilateral. This is on your condensed notes. It says the sum of the measures of a quadrilateral is what? That's not right. My notes are wrong. That's supposed to be 360. It definitely does not equal 180. Does that look like a triangle? Okay, and so if I look at this right here, I could actually use my little trick on this one right here where let's say from angle two, let's say this is the vertex. Put a point on angle two, and I want to see how many diagonals we have in this figure. How many diagonals can I find it from angle two? Can I draw a diagonal this way? Can I draw here? Is that a diagonal? No, because it's connected to the vertex. Where could I go to draw a diagonal? I could go to four, and then I need to check the other one. Can I go here to three? No, because no, it's part of the polygon. How many triangles do you say? Two. So it's 180 for this one. It's 180 for that. What's 180 plus 180? 360. That's why it needs to be equal to 360. The sum of the angles is 360. All right, here we go. It says find the following measures. I need to find the measure of angle Q and I need to find the measure of angle R. You have gotten so good at writing equations. You have. You guys are going right to it. You're not asking me constantly all the time, how do I do it? How do I do it? You've kind of gotten used to that. 
So I needed measure Q and R, but I see I have some variables in my polygon. What do you got, Brandon? Start me off. Can I do plus X plus two X? And what then? Okay, there you go. I was waiting to hear if I heard you say this. All of the angles added up in the quadrilateral equal 360. A four-sided figure will always add up to 360 because we know we can make two triangles. That adds up to 360. And then he said 150 plus 3x equals 360. And here we are from Algebra 1, a two-step equation that needs to be solved. Remember a two-step equation? you got to subtract 150 from both sides, whatever I do to one side of the equation. And we get 3x yeah. equals 0, 1. Oh, that's 210. Okay. Sorry. And then when you divide by 3, 7. seven. It works out evenly. Yep. 21 divided by 3. Good. So we know x equals 70. Yay, we're done. Are we? Annabelle says no. All right. What do I do? Well, I'm figuring that out right now. Oh, my gosh. Nice. It says that r is 2 times x, and we know x is 70. 2x, 2 times 70. It's going to be 140. How about q? That is X. It says Q is X, and my X is 70. Okay, keep going. Example five, and then we get to start homework. Mm -hmm. Example five. You guys got this. You got this. Who cares? It's a little longer. You got it. <laughs>